Warning, there will be spoilers at the end of this video, so beware. Hey, I'm Amy and welcome or welcome back. Today I am going to be talking about my next movie on my Oscar review list, Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. I was kind of skeptical about seeing this movie at first because from things I had read it was kind of glorifying a racist cop and I wasn't sure I really wanted to see that, but after watching it, I can definitively say it has been one of my favorites so far. But I haven't watched all the movies on the nominee list, so we'll just have to wait and see my thoughts on where this will rank towards the end. Like I did with Lady Bird, I'm going to be talking about the cast first. Frances McDormand, oh my goodness, she is such a badass in this movie. She doesn't take shit from anybody, and I feel like this is just the perfect character for Frances McDormand because that's just kind of the way I feel like she is in real life as well, but at the same time, she's also a very caring human being. You kind of see that in a scene where she's just trying to get the billboards or trying to buy the billboards and there's a cockroach just laying on its back and she kind of flips it over to give it some more life and she really ends up caring and showing she cares for a lot of different people, including her abusive ex-husband and the sheriff who she doesn't think is actually looking for her daughter's killer. And then there's Woody Harrelson who plays the sheriff. I feel like he's just playing a regular Woody Harrelson role, except he's a little bit more dad in this. He just has a, he just feels a little bit more fatherly in this than he does in most any other movies that I feel like I've seen him in in a while. But I also wasn't really fond of his last scene in the movie and the way he kind of left everything. At least initially. When it first happened I really wasn't too happy with it but I really loved the way it pays off in the end and I'll talk about that a little bit towards the end of this movie which is kind of a spoiler. Again, if you did not realize, there will be spoilers in this video. It's probably one of the very few videos that I will ever do spoilers in. So, going off from that little rant, I want to talk a little bit about Sam Rockwell's character, who a lot of people considered him just a glorified racist cop in this movie, and I will be talking about that a little bit more towards the end as well. But I've really, really kind of hated and loved Sam Rockwell's character, but I feel like it was also a perfect fit for him. He's a huge racist drunk asshole, but he's also the biggest idiot and I feel like this was just a blast for Sam Rockwell to play because I feel like it's just a very quintessential Sam Rockwell character. It just felt like he fit right into this, just like Frances McDormand fit right into her character as well. This is going to be a little bit spoilery. If I do start getting into spoiler territory, I will put up a time code that you can skip to. I have a lot of thoughts on this movie. It is going to get a little intense and a lot spoilery. A lot of spoilers. The first thing though I want to talk about isn't super spoilery, so you can, you'll be okay for now. It's not just about a mother wanting to find the killer of her daughter. It's about a small town that suffers from police brutality and racism and just kind of horrible things that aren't really talked about in today's society, even though they really need to be. And a lot of people say that this film glorifies the police brutality, but it also is showing a different side than what we see and kind of just showing us, giving us a looking glass into the things that we don't see in our everyday lives, showing us this is the stuff we need to start talking about, this is the stuff we need to start doing, and the stuff that just we kind of shove under the rug and just forget about. It's also something that happens a lot in some small southern or even midwestern towns nobody even thinks about or sometimes even cares about. But this film is also really about the perseverance of the human spirit, trying to figure out and do what's right, and also caring about your fellow human being, which does lead me into the spoilery part of this video. So time code right here for you to skip to if you do not want to hear the spoilers. Okay, so all the people who don't want to hear spoilers are gone. Let's talk about the ending of this movie. I was asked on Stardust about my opinion on this and it really got me thinking a lot deeper about some of the themes and character arcs throughout this film. The question I was posed was, do you think Mildred and Dixon ended up going and killing that rapist in Idaho. My personal opinion is I don't think they did. I think they got there. They maybe beat him up a little bit and then just kind of turned him into the police being like, hey, this guy's a rapist. I have DNA to prove it, something like that. But I don't think that they actually did it. And I think this way because of the character arc for one and the lack thereof 
of a character arc for another. The lack of character arc for Mildred is kind of the reason why I don't think she did it. She is still a hard ass, but she still has so much compassion for other human beings. Even though she does treat someone like Peter Dinklage's character, for example, kind of like shit just because of the way he looks. Even though he is madly in love with her, she still doesn't treat him the way she treats pretty much everyone else. She kind of just tolerates him and just lets him go. But I don't think she would really be able to kill somebody when it comes down to it. She set fire to the police station, but she didn't think that anybody was in there, especially Dixon. That's why she was okay with setting it on fire. And then when she found out that Dixon was in there, she felt horrible for doing so. Even though she really is not a huge fan of Dixon. And in the end, she still isn't a huge fan of him. He's still a racist cop who beats people, but she still goes with him to defeat an evil in the world, even if it's not necessarily the evil that they were looking to defeat. Dixon, on the other hand, has not a huge character arc, but a pretty decent sized character arc. He starts off at this huge racist cop who, because of being racist and beating people because of his status, he gets fired and loses his status and it kind of grounds him. And after the sheriff kills himself and leaves notes for Mildred and Dixon and other members of the community, Dixon reads his letter and kind of comes to realize that Maybe he could be a better person. Maybe catching the guy who murdered Mildred's daughter is what's going to bring him back on the force and get him where he belongs. Which, spoiler alert, doesn't really do anything in the end and the reason why he teams up with Mildred to go find this rapist in Idaho. The reason I don't think that Dixon kills the rapist along with Mildred is the fact that he has this character arc. He is still kind of an asshole, but he's not going to kill this person because he's kind of had a change of heart from the sheriff's letter. I think he'll realize that if he wants to get back on the police force and become the detective that he wants to be, he'll have to be a little bit nicer to people or just do the right thing more often and not just hurt people for no reason or because of what they look like or things that they have done in the past. It's better to just kind of lock this guy up and put him away. But overall, he's teaming up with Mildred even though he still doesn't really like her either, just to set something right in his mind. Pretty much for the same reason that Mildred's doing this as well. They're just going out there to fight an evil in the world and make the world a little less worse of a place. In the end, no character is perfect, just like in life, and I think that's what the movie is really getting at. Something horrible happened to all of these people and they deal with it pretty much the same way most anybody else in real life would deal with it. Set in a movie where it's a little bit more exaggerated and maybe some of this stuff wouldn't necessarily happen. Although it might happen in some small southern or midwestern towns, just like it happens in this one. So now that we're out of the spoilers, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this film before I wrap it up and put it on the scale. Something I really, really enjoy about this movie is the fact that it doesn't really give you the whole story of what happened with Mildred's daughter. It just kind of drops you in to the middle of everything where Mildred is just trying to figure it all out and just do justice for her daughter. And along the way, you get little bits and pieces of what her daughter was like, not just from a scene, one scene that they show. They only show one scene with her daughter and what happened right before her daughter was raped and murdered, but you get from different characters little bits and pieces of the relationship between Mildred and her daughter, different things throughout the town, like the way the police station operates, the way the sheriff operates, the way Dixon's character operates. So you kind of have to piece the story together along, but it's not like it's really hard to, but it's not like it spoon feeds it to you. It's very easy to just follow the story and just watch this masterful piece of work. I'll talk a little bit more about this when I do a review on Get Out as well, but I love movies that have a social commentary to them. It really makes you think about what you're watching, the world you live in, and how you're actually living your own life, and wanting to do something about it. On the scale out of the movies I reviewed so far, I would probably put Three Billboards as right now winning the Oscar. I absolutely loved this movie so much. I really enjoyed this movie. It just felt so real and had such a great message and really made me think, not just about like the social commentary stuff, but really think deeper into the characters. And that's something I really enjoy, especially if you've watched my channel for a while, you know I love going in depth into character arcs and storylines and just the whole 
process of a script. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you, whoever you are. Let me know who you are in the comments down below and let's be friends. If you enjoyed this, leave a like and subscribe if you're new because I'm talking Oscars all the way up until the actual Oscars and I love talking movies, TV shows, and filmmaking with you guys. So I hope you stick around and I'll see you next time. Bye!